The title for this morning's sermon is Deacons and the Joy and Salvation of Our King. So last Sunday, we considered how our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, how he ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of the Father, and how an important part of his session, his ministry, a huge part of that comes to us through his deacons. There was a lack of manpower in the church in Acts. Certain widows were being neglected in the distribution of food. And so Jesus created the office of deacon. The existence of deacons would allow the elders of the church, the apostles back then at the time, to devote themselves fully to prayer and to the ministry of God's word. But the existence of deacons would also allow something else, something new. It would allow certain men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, it would allow these men to be appointed to the duty of fully devoting themselves to the practical love and care of God's people. And so praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for his, his session ministry to his church. That was last Sunday. Lord willing, in a few more weeks, we will have deacons. New English-speaking deacons for our church. And I'll say it again. This is so exciting. This is very historic. And it's also very, very, very encouraging. I say this because there will be much more cheer. And I do believe there will be greater morale here at our church. There will be much more encouragement and comfort here at Highland. And the reason why is simply this. Deacons are in the business of salvation joy. Deacons are in the business, the work of salvation joy. This is the big picture for deacons. Deacons exist to make sure that all church members enjoy the salvation joy that comes with Christ our King. It's simple as that. Deacons are those who make sure that no one is neglected or left out from experiencing the joy of salvation in the church as we wait for the return of Christ our King. In today's passage, at least the first part, Acts chapter 2, 42 to 47, we see very simply a beautiful portrait of a church that is full of salvation joy. It's not hard to read it and understand what's going on. The church, it says, it devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship. Why? Because they were so joyful about the salvation of Jesus. It says that the church broke bread together in their homes, and they worshiped and prayed together. This breaking of bread, this worshiping in the homes, what is, why? Why did they do that? They were joyfully celebrating the salvation of Jesus. In the passage, it goes on to say that the church, they were distribute, distributing resources to anyone who was in need. Why were they doing that? Because in light of the salvation of Jesus, they were joyfully treasuring one another and they were joyfully treasuring, laying up treasures in heaven. And lastly, the church received food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. Why? You know why. They were all recipients of the salvation joy of Christ Jesus. What a portrait, what a beautiful picture of something that is warm and welcoming, tender and cozy. It's kind of like the feeling you get when it's a Sunday night 
and you're at a G5 gathering at someone's home. Remember those gatherings? It's been such a long time since we had them. Remember the food that we would eat together, the games that we would play together? Remember the stories, the conversations, the laughter? Do you remember the hospitality and the times of prayer and times of thanksgiving? If so, that's kind of like a really good illustration of what we see in Acts. You've seen it here at Highland. A beautiful portrait of a church that is full of salvation joy. Here's the thing, though. When it comes to the deacon, the ultimate job of the deacon, the overall picture of the deacon is to protect and promote this to protect and promote the salvation joy of all church members and to do this through practical love, practical care for everyone at church. This is their business. Deacons are in the business of the glorious salvation joy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And there's no business like salvation joy business because there's no greater joy than knowing that your sins are forgiven. There's no greater joy than the joy of victory over death, even though we weep and suffer. There is no greater joy than being adopted as true sons and true daughters into the royal family of God. There's no greater joy than knowing and feeling like you belong. There's no greater joy than the joy of being a friend, a friend of the king. Deacons are like hosts of this party. And so deacons are therefore entrusted to host the most warm, the most welcoming experience of all. Why? Because the most warm And the most welcoming one of all is Jesus himself who invites us to his banqueting table. And Jesus, he is the one who ministers his warmth and his welcome. And he does that primarily through his deacons. That's a very awesome work a business, a duty, a calling, an appointment. Praise the Lord. Now, promoting and protecting and promoting this salvation joy through practical love and care for all church members, that is no small thing. In fact, at times it can be quite heartbreaking. In the second part of our text, in Acts 6, when we are told that certain widows were being neglected, in the daily distribution, that ought to break our hearts. These widows were being neglected, but not merely neglected from the food. They were being neglected in the church's celebration of the joy and salvation of Jesus. That's the big picture. Think about it. One of the worst feelings in the world is when you show up to a party, but you are alone. No one talks to you. You're kind of by yourself. It feels awkward. You don't feel like you belong. You kind of want to just leave. That's a really bad feeling, right? And let's add one more thing there. One of the worst feelings in the world is when you're the host of a party, but you run out of food. (laughs) And you're awkwardly standing there watching the latecomers or whoever grab a plate and they pick up the scraps and there's no more meat left. But they get a drink and they don't know what to do and you don't know what to do. 
Is there anything worse than that when it comes to parties? Jesus knows how this feels. And as the king and the head of his church, as the ultimate host of his party, he will not have any of that happen. He does not want anyone to be neglected from the joy of his salvation. And that is why he gloriously instituted the office of deacon in the New Testament church in Acts chapter, two, at chapter 6. Jesus gives us deacons, praise the Lord, men who will protect the joy, who will promote the joy and the salvation of Christ. Deacons who will, I, this, is, this rhymes, it's cool, they will protect against neglect. Protection against neglection, is that right? Protecting against neglecting. Jesus gives his church deacons, deacons who will promote things like kindness, friendliness, benevolence, and charity. Jesus, he gives his church deacons who will have a heart for all the church members and love and care for them and make sure no one falls through the, clack, through the cracks. Jesus gives his church deacons who will take seriously the business of the joy of his salvation, the joy and the salvation of our King. And that's what Jesus is doing for us locally here at Highland, soon and very soon. Praise be to our God. And so in closing, wow, I, I think today I'm going to set the record for the quickest worship service. <laughs> The reason why, by the way, is because I have Presbytery this week, so I, I made one sermon into two, and I made it cut in half, so it's quick. Highland, let's look forward to all of this. Simply put, let's get excited. Lord willing, in a few weeks, we will have deacons, new English-speaking deacons for our church. Seriously, this is very exciting, and of course, it's, obviously, it's historic but it's so encouraging too. I look forward to seeing greater cheer and morale and encouragement and comfort here at Highland. I look forward to seeing a community of saints who will grow more in assurance knowing that they truly belong here at Highland. I look forward to seeing all of us rally behind our deacons as they lead us to this business of joy, that we would all together be joyful with them and help one another be joyful. Man, these are exciting and historic times. You guys have no idea. Think about it. Think about it. I don't think any of us here has grown up in a church where we've fully, honestly, truly, received ministry from deacons. This is a new thing here in America, English-speaking EM deacons who are really doing the work of the deacons. I've never personally been blessed with that ministry myself. And so I'm very excited. If the Lord provides Highland deacons, I'm looking forward to receiving that ministry from them. And you should too. This is something I am willing to bet you've never experienced in your entire life as a Christian. Let's pray for this moment, for this time. Let's pray for the deacon nominees on our side and also on the KM side. And most of all, let's give thanks and praise as our king does his session ministry to us by bringing us new deacons. May the grace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for 
how you provide deacons for your church, for your people. And this morning, we are simply reminded of the profound business of deacons, the protection, the promotion of salvation joy, the salvation joy of Christ our King. Oh Lord, we pray that there will be much joy here at Highland. What a wonderful church you have given us here, and yet there is so much greater joy, greater government, more quality of ministry that can be experienced here. And so we look forward to that. Please bless all the nominees that are taking their exams, studying for the English side and also for the CAM side. May you bless our church overall. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.